people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome to a very special behind the scenes video talking about the brand new Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Because in today's video we are going to go in depth on moments in the FNAF film that were shortened, reshot, and even some scenes and full on characters that were removed completely. So I hope you guys are all very excited and intrigued to see what content was actually cut from the final release of the film. And if you want to see more videos on the FNAF movie, I've got a whole bunch coming up, so subscribe to the channel, you don't want to miss out on them. But before before we hop into the scenes that were actually removed and changed, let's preface, how do we know that this is official? Because recently we got this post by a user on the Five Nights at Freddy's subreddit saying, so I saw one of the test screenings for the FNAF movie and here's what got cut out for the final product. Seeing the final film was quite interesting, honestly, as I had known what was coming. I saw the test screenings back during the summer and thought the movie was pretty good, albeit definitely incomplete. The original movie was easily over two hours long and the runtime for the final Final film clocks in at about an hour and 50 minutes, so hearing that it was originally over two hours long is pretty interesting. Several scenes were cut out from what I remember, a lot of the big differences excluding deleted scenes were just how scenes played out and extra dialogue they ended up taking out. And we also had community member Entom verify that the sources from this post are legit, everything they talk about in this post is 100% accurate. We trust Entom here on the channel, I've personally been able to verify some of their sources as well, so I do believe if Entom says this post is legit, that this post is legit. And especially because we have some of the actors and actresses involved in the FNAF movie actually confirming what is said in some of these bullet points. And for a perfect example, let's start off with bullet point number one. After the guard in the opening scene was attacked, instead of seeing him in the Torture Freddy device, we saw a sequence of him being dragged down the hallway to his death while he was zoning in and out. Also, they used Foxy's original hum for his scenes, unsure why they replaced it. Not only was that scene briefly showed in one of the trailers, for the FNAF movie, we also had Ryan Reinecke, who plays the security guard at the start of the film, verified on Twitter saying, yes, after I'm rushed by Foxy by the grated door, we shot a whole sequence where I'm being drugged down the hallway from Foxy's point of view. I'm in and out of consciousness while blood trails from my head as I'm being drugged along. And later clarifying, they probably cut that scene to keep the PG-13 rating. Honestly, that would line up with a lot of the cutaway shots we see in the film with Carl being attacked by the cupcake, with Hank being completely out of view when we see his kill in the closet. So seeing someone go in and out of consciousness while blood trails down their head probably had to be cut again to keep that PG-13 rating. Next up, we have a character that was completely cut, which is pretty disappointing because Max actually had a dog. The dog, whose screen name was apparently going to be Bonesy, while the actor's actual name is Toby, was actually going to be with Max while she babysat Abby at Mike's house. Kat Connor Sterling, who is the actress for Maxine, has posted plenty of behind the scenes photos with Toby and he looks like such a good boy. I'm so sad they got him cut. The training tape that Mike plays on night one was originally 30-ish seconds longer, showing the animatronics performing to the song Talking in Your Sleep, which we hear plenty of throughout the full film. This was again something we saw a lot of in the teasers and promotional material that just didn't end up in the final film, which was very disappointing to me especially. I think one of the coolest things we see in this film is the animatronics performing on stage when Vanessa boots them up to show Mike, but seeing them all fixed up, especially Fox y'all fixed up because they had a fixed FNAF one Foxy animatronic on set. We've seen plenty of photos of him and the other fixed up FNAF 1 characters seeing them perform while the pizzeria was still open would have been amazing. Next up, we have Max and Mike had a longer interaction after Mike got home from work after the first night. Mainly Max talking about her love for Abby and hopes for a good life. And once again, this was something that actress Kat Connor Sterling confirmed on Twitter, responding to a community member saying that Max admired the relationship that Max had with Abby, wishing she had a similar bond and relationship with her own brother Jeff. During night two, Mike ended up looking through the office before going to sleep. He found a stack of cassette tapes. He went through all of them, each of them being a segment of a news report about the missing children at Freddy's. And once again, this is something we saw in the eight minute long, like promotional security tape that Universal released in promotion with uh, Scott's Freddy in Space game. We had the newscaster outside of Freddy Fazbear's talking about the missing children's incident. And man, if I'm looking back on the film, I think the missing children's incident was severely, severely under 
underappreciated. Of course, it's a tragic event, but it's one of the more intriguing parts of the very first FNAF game. Carl getting his face eaten was a way longer sequence. The whole vandalizing sequence was longer, which again seems to be confirmed by Joseph Poliquin, the actor for Carl over on Twitter. You should have seen all the stuff Carl did that got cut out of the movie. Moving on to a different vandalizer, this time Hank. Before Bonnie exited the closet, Bonnie grabbed his neck and pinned him against the wall, kind of sliding him upwards with his hand. Hank, I think, had a perfect setup for such an amazing kill in the film, though unfortunately, it's just off screen and all we see is a bloody handprint on the window. The shot with Bonnie lurking in the darkness in the closet is probably one of my favorites throughout the whole film. Hank is easily one of my favorite characters and, in my opinion, one of the more underutilized characters in the film. So I am just a little disappointed that his kill and encounter with Bonnie would have been just a bit more badass. Max originally asked the kid if he was okay while following him to Freddy. While following the kid, she had to gather herself but kept on pushing. She looked through the animatronics besides Freddy before grabbing the chair. When the hand reached out towards her, we saw her scream and fall backwards before getting pulled into Freddy's mouth. And once again, Kat Connor Sterling confirmed this on Twitter, saying, The number one reason for why Max chased the kid was because she was concerned. They cut her looking through the pile of animatronics asking if he was okay. Her original line was, It's okay, honey. I won't hurt you. Which makes sense because Max is a babysitter. And actually, fun fact, so is Kat Connor Sterling in real life. So of course, her character would be very caring when talking to kids, and she's even like that with Abby in another cut line. Kat again going to Twitter to write Max loved and encouraged Abby's drawings. One of the lines you guys didn't get to see was she's getting really good, you know, the drawings? Going a bit further into the film, next up we have when Mike tried to confront Vanessa before Abby touched Bonnie's guitar. Vanessa began to rant about how he cannot and never will find the guy who killed Garrett. That interaction between those two characters and the final cut of the film was always kind of weird to me, like Vanessa gets super aggressive very quick after building that fort. Of course, later on in the film when we learn a bit more about Vanessa's backstory, that scene makes a bit more sense but actually connecting it back to William and Garrett I feel like would make it a bit more emotional and connect it a bit more with the characters. Because Vanessa knows that Mike will never find Garrett's killer because that's her father. He's been getting away with it for years. I don't know, I feel like they changed a lot of Vanessa's dialogue in the film because from one second she's being super nice to Mike, listening to him about his dead parents and, you know, and Garrett, and then throwing his medicine in the river, you know, talking to him about how she wants Abby to be safe, and then saying, if she comes back here, I'm gonna shoot you. But actually, speaking of Vanessa, during the scene where Vanessa is revealed to be William's daughter, we see flashes of children screaming in a dim area. Young Vanessa is seen watching the whole thing happen at times, and though you never see him directly, excluding the outline of his hands or something, William is the one committing the murders. I feel like this would have been a fantastic scene to see play out in the film. Not only does it add on to the missing children's incident, which we talked about earlier, it also adds on to Vanessa's backstory, because I think the most we get is when Mike is like, Vanessa, come with me to the pizzeria, and she kind of stumbles over, you know, she's freaking out because if William Afton's there, she's gonna lose control because her father was not good to her. I think as emotional as that scene can be, seeing Vanessa break down at the thought of, you know, encountering her father again, again, I feel like they could have done more with her backstory, making it a bit more apparent, showing actually what happened to her. Because all we get is that scene and then her saying, I know what crazy is, Mike, this is not crazy and that's it. I would have loved, loved a lot more Vanessa backstory. And this next one just eats me up inside. Golden Freddy originally jump-scared Aunt Jane, knocking her cold to the ground. All we get in that scene is that panning shot of Golden Freddy behind the corner, which I will admit was pretty badass. But then we just see Aunt Jane lying on the floor, and I'm like, okay, is she dead? Like, is she just knocked out? It seems like she was gonna get jump-scared, get knocked out for a little bit, but it does seem like she's alive. But actually getting a Golden Freddy jump-scare, especially if it had that classic Golden Freddy scream sound effect, Effect, that would have been absolutely fantastic. FNAF fans would have loved that. When Abby is hiding in the arcade from Foxy, right before Foxy finds her spot, she grabs a shard of glass from off the broken arcade and throws it across the room. Foxy ends up looking away and she runs to the ball pit, watching him before going in. Watching that scene play out, I literally thought, how did she get over there? She had to cross Foxy's line of sight to get into the ball pit. So hearing that there was actually an explanation for how she got over there does make me feel a bit happier, but again, I feel like just for completion's sake of the scene, we should have seen that play out. Instead of running out of the kitchen calling for Abby, Garrett originally led Mike out of the kitchen and into the archway leading to the exit, which William walks out of, very similar to Foxy's transition before Abby goes into the arcade. This was a scene that not only Entom confirmed, but also Lucas Grant, the actor for Garrett, because over on his Instagram, he posted photos of him inside Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, which in the final film, we never see Garrett inside of, so it seems like 
that was the scene that was being filmed and it's also interesting to point out that Garrett is holding a Fredbear plushie. I love that transition scene with the ghost child turning into Foxy in Pirate's Cove, so seeing something similar like that would have been nice with Garrett. But also, I think the entrance that William has in the final film is just so, so sick, so awesome, so I feel like changing it might have made it a bit worse, but I I'm not entirely sure. And speaking of William, we have William seemed like he was in a lot more agony during the spring locking scene, even screaming in pain after putting on the mask. If you saw my spoiler review, you know I was begging, I was pleading, Blumhouse Universal, let my man scream. But all we get was William twitching inside the spring bonnie suit, which... Again, I would have liked him screaming. I think that definitely adds to the scene. They might have cut it because maybe that was too horrific and it was pushing the PG-13 rating, but I don't know, man. It, it just, it really would have added to it. That's it for the Reddit post, but we have a few more scenes to go over, this time provided by MatPat. In a YouTube short, he originally revealed that Max was going to die in a pool of blue paint instead of being bitten in half by Freddy. Cat Connor Sterling confirming this, saying, True, I auditioned for the blue paint scene back in December of 2022. Super glad they changed that scene, because what the heck was even the point of that? Moving on now to the credit scene with Corey X Kenshin. Originally, Corey, the cab driver, was going to see the balloon boy figure and scream, what the F? You know, but actually say the F word, though it probably would have been cut off because if you watch Corey, he doesn't like to swear. And originally, Afton wasn't actually going to be killed by the spring locks. And we actually got Enton posting a snippet of that original script with William dying. And it goes, he turns to flee, but a swing from Bonnie's guitar sends him to his knees. Then, Freddy is upon him, prying open the mouth of a suit as Chica drops her cupcake inside. What sounds like a meat grinder can be heard as the man in the yellow rabbit suit screams and begins to violently convulse. So it seems like all the animatronics would have attacked William Afton, they would have dropped the cupcake into a spring lock suit, and that's how he would have died. Definitely glad they changed that because what the hell was that? Now I hope it's clear I'm not making this video for you guys to go attack Blumhouse and Universal. Why did you exclude this scene? Why did you cut out this character or whatever? We did have Emma Tammy, the director of the film, reveal on a Reddit Q&A that additional content will be included on DVD releases of the film. So hopefully we can get some of these deleted scenes as extras or maybe we can get an extended cut of the film. The coffin cut, dare I say. And lastly, for cut content, we have an entire character, an entire YouTuber cameo that unfortunately did not make it into the final film because as revealed in a behind the scenes video posted by MatPat once again we can see that Markiplier was originally going to be the actor for the Freddy security guard at the start of the film. Now unfortunately there was a whole bunch of scheduling conflict because the FNAF film was filming at the exact same time as Mark's very own film Iron Lung, a film that Mark is not only starring in he's also directing. So honestly him choosing his own film over the FNAF movie is no surprise to me. We did have Scott Cawthon want Markiplier in a future FNAF film if that does happen. And since the film has made over $250 million at the box office, I'd say a second FNAF movie is very likely at this point. Hopefully one that features Markiplier, but our predictions and theories for that second film we're going to talk about in a future video. So thank you all so much for watching this very special FNAF movie behind the scenes video, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.